Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to be recreating famous paintings in my own art style and I'm slightly terrified because I feel like this has the potential to go terribly wrong. Two paintings that I've chosen to recreate today are Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johan Vermeer and The Scream by Edvard Munch. So yeah, hopefully I do them justice, especially because Girl with a Pearl Earring is one of my favourite pieces of like classic fine art, so I will be especially disappointed if I mess that one up. Also please comment down below any other challenges you would like to see me do. and. So anyway, let's get into the drawing and hopefully I don't mess up these classic pieces of fine art, fingers crossed. So I started off with Girl with a Pearl Earring just because I felt like it was going to be the easier of the two for me to recreate and that's mainly due to the fact that it is a female portrait and that's very much my strong point when it comes to art. I mean, let's be honest, when do I ever draw anything else? So yeah, I was slightly apprehensive with this one, which is why I started off with a pencil sketch and then added the kind of biro on top of it because I don't know why, sometimes I just find it a lot easier to sketch out using traditional art. So my aim was I would do this little biro sketch and then take a picture of it and then paint over it in my digital art programs. So Girl with a Pearl Earring, if you don't actually know the story behind it, like the history behind it, it was painted by the Dutch painter Johan Vermeer, I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in 1665, so quite a long time ago, and it was oil on canvas, and it's gone through many different names over the years, but the one that's kind of kind of stuck, I guess the one that we're going with at the moment, is Girl with a Pearl Earring. And I really, really like this one, like I mentioned before. I know a lot of people seem to debate about whether or not she is turning towards us, the viewer, or if she's turning away, but simply because, and this comes from like an animation standpoint, because I'm doing animation at university, we're normally taught that the eyes kind of lead the movement, and because she's looking directly at us, I feel like she is about to turn towards us but that's just how I kind of interpret the image. But yeah, I really, really like this painting, but it does seem to have the same kind of thing that happens with a lot of these old paintings, which is that the female subjects had like no eyebrows, and this is really difficult for me to recreate in my own art style. I literally had no idea how much I relied on eyebrows in my drawings until I decided to recreate this one. And like I said, I thought this was gonna be quite easy for me to do because it's a female character, but I was definitely thinking too soon when I thought it was gonna be easy because it just wasn't. And because I like to give my drawings such big eyes, um, that's how I like to stylize them. I did go with the kind of big eyes on her, but it just wasn't working. I just felt like she looked too bug eyed and it just was looking too weird. Also, you'll see that throughout my painting of her, I am colour picking from the actual painting to get the right colours, but about halfway through, I kind of gave up with that. I was just thinking to myself, like, I'm not doing a study of these paintings, I'm trying to reinterpret them in my own style. So it's sort of like a draw this in your style, I guess, but with like older famous paintings. So I was thinking, I need to stop being so regimented in directly copying the painting and think more about what I can do to add my own twist on it. And even though I was thinking in terms of that, I still don't think I really did enough to push it and to make it more of my own style. But I'm still pretty happy with how this one turned out. You'll see about halfway through the painting process, I actually switched from Paint Tool Side to Clip Studio Paint. And I've recently downloaded Clip Studio Paint for a free trial. I'm just trying it out because all of my artist friends have been raving about Clip Studio Paint for ages. And I wanted to see what all the um, what all the fuss was about, whether it was as good as everyone was saying. And I have to say, I was very impressed. I find that a lot of the time when I do digital art, it ends up looking too... What's the word? It looks too smooth and there's not enough texture. And I have a lot of like textured brushes in Photoshop, but for some reason I've never been able to get along with Photoshop. I know it's like the industry standard for digital art, but I'm still working towards getting good at painting in Photoshop. It just doesn't work for me. But Clip Studio Paint was like a weird little mix of Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci in the same way that I feel Krita is. However, I would say I actually kind of preferred it to Krita. I downloaded a load of gouache brushes 
and dry brush kind of brushes and painting over what I already had from paint to sigh meant that I could paint a lot more texture into this painting of the girl and it also meant I could kind of mimic the original look of the original painting because obviously it was painted with oil paints now I did debate for this video whether or not I should recreate the paintings traditionally in the same traditional mediums that they were originally painted in. With this one I was genuinely considering going around the corner and buying myself like a canvas and trying to recreate it in my style but on oil with oil paints but I just thought if it's a draw this in your style I don't often paint with oil paints and it just isn't really in my comfort zone. I mean if I were to do another video like this if you guys would like me to do another video like this I'd be very happy to push myself out of my comfort zone and do it traditionally and paint it in like traditional medium so with paint on canvas I think that would be interesting because when I was doing a level art all my final pieces I did actually do them in oil paints and I do kind of miss oil paints because they are fun to work with but they are so messy so yeah that's the reason I kind of went with digital art for these pieces. So the next piece that I decided to recreate, like I said earlier, was The Scream by Edvard Munch. And this one was so difficult for me. As soon as I started sketching it out in my sketchbook, I just had a feeling <laughs> this is going to go terribly wrong. I mean, if you came to this video for good art, it's just not going to be up to the same standard as my normal art is. Or maybe you guys do like this because it's different. I did have a lot more fun drawing the scream because it's so different to the normal stuff that I draw. But like I said, that was also kind of a bad thing because as I was drawing it, I was like, literally, what is this? What have I done? Just as I thought. Trash. I mean, if you look at the original painting, if you like zoom into the face, there isn't much to work with from the beginning. So I was like, how do I stylize this? How do I put this into my own style? Because the original face looks like, I don't know, kind of slightly surreal. So I kind of made the subject of the painting look slightly alien-y. <laughs> I don't know if that really worked or not, but that was that's what I decided I was going for. That was the vibe I was going for, just straight up alien looking. And the the original painting kind of is sort of unsettling and gives off this kind of weird horror vibe to it. So I thought that was within the theme to have the character look quite alien-y. Also you'll notice that I did not exactly copy the composition. Um, with this one I wanted the figure in the foreground to be a lot bigger, to be more in focus, because I don't know if I would say that's exactly my style, but I do like the characters in my paintings to be quite big compared to the background, but I don't know why I did that, I think it's because I was trying to fit it in the page in my sketchbook and that I just ended up sticking to it when I did it digitally. But yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with how I made him a lot bigger. I think it really draws attention to the screaming, the screams. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this piece. I'm sure you all know the scream, it's a very famous painting. And like I said earlier, it is by the Norwegian expressionist artist Edvard Munch, and it was painted in 1893, so not as long ago as Girl of a Pearl Earring. And this particular one was oil, pastel, and crayon on cardboard, but he actually painted four versions of this within his lifetime, which I thought was really interesting. It's sort of like how <laughs> I've done a million versions of the Girl of the Rainbow Hair, I really thought the story of how the inspiration hit him for this piece was very interesting because Edvard Munch made a diary entry about how he came up with the piece and he wrote in his diary, I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. I felt a breath of melancholy. Suddenly the sky turned blood red. I stopped and leaned against the railing, deftly tired, looking out across the flaming clouds that hung like a blood and a sword over the blue black fjord and town. My friends walked on. I stood there, trembling with fear, and I sensed a great infinite scream pass through nature. And it's kind of horrifying. Like, he really was going for the this kind of horrifying look to it. 
I, I found it really interesting hearing the diary entry and how it related to the piece. It kind of made a lot more sense how the inspiration hit him for that. This is another thing that's kind of pushed me to think I don't have to keep drawing the same portraits of girls every single week on this channel. <laughs> I mean, I do have a draw this again coming tomorrow, which is a portrait of a girl, <laughs> but I promise you guys it will probably be the last time I draw like a portrait of a pretty girl like on this channel for a while because like I was saying, my same face syndrome video i'm getting incredibly bored of drawing the same thing over and over again and i know people are getting bored of seeing it so anyway i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i know that my screen painting didn't turn out that great but also in a weird way i kind of like it but i also kind of hate it it kind of reminds me of like in spongebob when they have the like paintings that are way too realistic looking that's kind of how i feel my version of the scream is but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And like I mentioned, I have a Draw This Again video coming tomorrow of my Fading Fairy piece. So if you would like to watch that, check back tomorrow. And I really hope you guys found this entertaining in some way, even if you hated my drawings. And yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.